Okay, this how-to video is gonna talk about uh, design sync and uh, creating netlists from AllCAD Capture and Capture CIS, CIS into the Cadence PCB tools. So traditionally, when you get to the end of the design and you wanted to make a PCB netlist, you would select the design name in the project window and then go to tools and create netlist. So you still can do this. Um, this form has changed though. So now you can only effectively do the, the netlist as the, the, the schematic part of it. To actually feed it into the PCB, you would uh, now launch PCB Editor and do a logic import netlist and do it that way. This netlist form here also supports uh, other formats. So if you wanted to export to another uh, EDA vendor's CAD tool, like pads, for example, obviously you could then go and generate a netlist for a pads netlist here um, and generate the netlist that way. The better way to do this now is you're actually using the design sync command. So there's a, a new menu called PCB. So we've got a design sync command. There's a design sync setup. So we can look at that. This is where you would do all your default settings for, for to tie into PCB editor. So things like whether you change the components, whether you allow edge removal, um, whether you want constraints to go forward, obviously from the constraint manager flow. Um, and then there's obviously the, the configuration file, which is your Allegro CFG file. So obviously you can still transfer properties from or capture through into P the Cadence PCB tools. Um, so that's how you would control that one. But once you're ready to go, you can effectively run the command PCB design sync, or there's this new icon, launch design sync. So we'll do that. Um, it's asking for the folder where the netlist files are gonna go. If I had a template board, I could use a template board or an input board. Uh, and then the board file that I wanna go and generate, and then I click OK. And then the, net, uh, the design sync tool is run. Uh, I get a license picker to launch PCB editor. And I'm ready to go. So in placement edit application mode, there's a list of all my components that I need to place. So just as an example, maybe let's just bring in a couple of connectors just to see that we have that kind of full interaction between the two. So that's the basics of it. Um, let's go back to uh, AllCAD Capture and maybe let's go to a different page. Uh, let's go to this page here maybe. Let's make a change. So what we'll do is we'll just do a copy and a paste of this switch. And we'll just uh, rename the reference designator. Call this SW20. Now what I'm gonna do now, I'm not, I'm not gonna save or anything like that. I'm just gonna launch Design Sync again. And what you'll see now is effectively a list of the changes between schematic and PCB. So it's going to show me that it's going to add a component. So if I synchronize that, I'm happy with the changes. That change is made, the update board is successful. So I can then go back to PCB editor. And switch 20 is there ready for me to go and place. And obviously this is a two way street. So if I needed to make a change here, like a pin swap or a rename, let's just go and do a rename. So we'll edit the text here. Call this SW200. That's done. Again, no saving or anything like that. We'll go back to AllCAD Capture and we'll run the design sync command again. But this time what we'll do is we'll swap the arrow from layout to schematic. So it's gonna edit the reference designator from switch 20 to switch 200. So if I then sync that, that change is now made. You can see the update is successful and we're good to go. So it's a good, uh, almost like forward and back annotation process called design sync. Um, and there's a much better flow because it shows you the differences before you actually commit to them.